two large consequences for our approach to existence result from this vision of the self in its circumstance against the background of this conception of ultimate reality. The first consequence has to do with our relation to the structures of society and of thought that we create and inhabit. We must reject two mistaken views of this relation. Let me call them by the names of individuals in the style of early Christian theology the Hegelian heresy and the Sartrean heresy. Although rather than being associated only with individual thinkers, they are permanent tendencies in the history of thought and of religion. According to the Hegelian heresy, there is one definitive structure of life and of thought towards which history progresses. This structure is all-inclusive. It contains every form of experience that we have reason to value. The truth is that although we can hope to change the quality as well as the content of the structures, we can never find in the world a definitive home, free of all defect. There is no such structure of all structures. And every time we are inclined to treat one such structure as the definitive setting, we commit a sin of idolatry that enslaves us to our own creations. Take an example from the political history of the United States. The Americans have been inclined to believe that they discovered at the time of the foundation of their republic the definitive formula of a free society. All humanity, according to this belief, must either subscribe to the formula or continue to languish in poverty and despotism. The formula needs only to be adjusted from time to time under the pressure of crisis. The result has been to persuade Americans to exempt their own institutions from the experimentalist impulse that is otherwise so central to their national life. And those thinkers from Jefferson to Dewey, who tried to persuade them to lift this exemption and subject their institutions to the discipline of experimentalism, have on the whole failed. The result is to prevent the country from addressing its own problems and remaining faithful to its own ideals. According to the Sartrean heresy, shared by the Romantics and the Existentialists and the negative theologians of all eras, we can be fully human only at those moments in which we resist and disturb the structures. Humanity is most itself when it is romantic love rather than the routines and repetitions of marriage, or the crowd in the streets rather than the organized apparatus of the bureaucracy. According to this view, every structure is the hand of Midas, freezing and killing the spirit. The spirit floats over the structures of social life or of thought, and is unable to penetrate and to possess them. 
the Sartrean heresy commits a sin of despair. It fails to understand that the character of the structures that we create, as well as their content, is up for grabs in history. We are not restricted to replacing one structure by another and to being fully human only in those intervals in which one has broken up before the other has been affirmed. We can hope to create structures that by inviting their own revision cease to demand from us that we pay for our engagement in them the price of our surrender to them. Structures that do not insist on having the last word, but rather enable us to keep the last word for ourselves. The rejection of the Hegelian and of the Sartrean heresies leads to a different view of the relation between self and structure. The view is that we must face the world as it is, but never accept it as it is. We can revise step by step and piece by piece every feature of the world that we inhabit and create a world that is less alien to our nature as the embodied and situated but also resisting and transcendent beings that we are. 